In this nugget, we're going to learn about terminal velocity. First, let's remind ourselves about balanced and unbalanced forces. Forces are balanced when there is no resultant force on an object. For example, these two forces are exactly the same size, but pulling in opposite directions. They cancel each other out. If the forces are balanced, an object will remain stationary, stay still or be stopped, or travel at a constant velocity, a constant speed. However, when forces are unbalanced, an object will feel a resultant force, so it will accelerate. In this instance, the force to the right is much larger than the force to the left. This means there'll be a resultant force to the right, an unbalanced force to the right. So our object will accelerate towards the right. This could mean it will speed up towards the right, or if it were travelling towards the left, it would slow down, or it might change direction. So let's think about now. Why does a car have a maximum speed? When we push down on the accelerator pedal, there's a force from the engine, and that should accelerate the car. But why can't it get faster and faster and faster forever? Why does it have a top speed? Let's find out. When the driver puts his foot on the accelerator, the engine force provides a constant forward force. There's an unbalanced or resultant force forwards, so the car accelerates. But, the faster the car travels, the larger the resistive force acting on it. This makes the unbalanced force less. But, the faster the car travels, the larger the resistive force acting against it. That's because air resistance and friction from the road increase with speed. This means that the size of the unbalanced force decreases. There is still is one, the engine force is still larger than the resistive forces, but the unbalanced force is less. So the car still accelerates, it's still getting faster, but by not as much. Eventually, the resistive forces will increase until they balance or are equal to the engine force. When the forces are balanced, there's no resultant force acting on the car, so it doesn't accelerate, but it's already moving, so it's going to travel at a constant speed. We call this constant speed terminal velocity. Terminal velocity is the maximum speed reached once the resistive forces equal the forward force. It happens when the forces are balanced, so no more acceleration or changing speed can occur. To reach terminal velocity, you need one force to remain the same, in this case our engine force, and the other to change with speed, in this case our resistive forces. Because the engine force is constant, the resistive forces can increase until they equal the engine force. That way the forces can balance and will reach a top speed, a terminal velocity. Let's think about a velocity time graph while we reach terminal velocity. We'll want time along the x and velocity along the y. Let's look at the car's journey. At first, the resultant force accelerates the car. The velocity increases. But as it gets faster, the resistive forces increase. So the acceleration decreases as the resultant force decreases. But you see that the car's speed is still increasing, but by less and less, so we get this curve. Finally, the forces are balanced. The resistive forces increase until they're equal to the forward, the engine force, and so we have a constant speed. And that gives us a flat line on the graph. So we start with a diagonal line, that then becomes a curve and finally becomes a flat line on the graph. Let's look at another example now. We're going to look at skydiving. When a skydiver first jumps out of a plane, their weight accelerates them towards the ground. We have an unbalanced force downwards, so they speed up downwards towards the ground. But as they speed up, the air resistance acting on them increases. Think about walking into the wind compared to running into the wind. You'll feel a much larger force against you if you run into the wind. So the faster our skydiver is falling, the larger the force of air resistance acting on them. Eventually, air resistance will increase so much 
that it's equal to, but in the opposite direction, from the weight. Air resistance and weight are balanced, so the skydiver reaches terminal velocity. The skydiver is still falling downwards, but now they're falling at a constant speed. Remember, air resistance has increased, but weight has stayed the same. Now, our skydiver is falling down towards the ground at a constant speed. If they hit the ground at this speed, it will be very dangerous and they probably won't survive. Our skydiver needs to slow down. So they open their parachute. Opening the parachute increases their surface area. Parachutes have a huge surface area and that increases the air resistance acting on them because they're hitting more air particles as they fall. We've now got a large resultant force upwards. This means that the skydiver is going to slow down. They're still falling downwards, but they're going to fall downwards at a slower speed. But as their speed decreases, their air resistance is going to decrease because air resistance changes with speed. This means that they'll still be slowing down, but by less and less, and still falling downwards. Eventually, they'll slow down so much that their air resistance will decrease to the point that it's equal to the weight, but in the opposite direction. Air resistance and weight are balanced, so now the skydiver reaches a new, slower terminal velocity. They're still falling downwards, but they're falling downwards at a constant speed. And this time, they're falling downwards at a slow, safe constant speed, so they can land on the ground. Note in this case again, air resistance has changed, but weight has stayed the same. This time, air resistance has decreased. The forces of air resistance and weight are the same size as they were in our previous fast terminal velocity, but this time, the skydiver is travelling more slowly. So, let's put that on a velocity time graph. At first, we have our unbalanced force of weight acting downwards, and then air resistance starts to increase, so our graph begins to curve. Finally, we have balanced forces, so we flatline, and then we open the parachute. When we open the parachute, we have an unbalanced force upwards, and that's going to slow down our skydiver suddenly, so we get a drop in our graph. But the rate at which they're slowing down, the deceleration, is going to decrease, because the unbalanced force is going to decrease, because air resistance will decrease with speed. And so we get this curve. And finally, the forces are balanced again, so we get another flat line. At first, velocity increases, but by less and less, because acceleration decreases as the resultant force downwards decreases. Then we have a fast terminal velocity. Then velocity decreases, but by less and less. Deceleration decreases as the resultant force upwards decreases. And we finally reach a slow terminal velocity. That's our velocity time graph for a skydiver, but what would a displacement time graph look like? Have a think. So at first we have an increasing speed, then a fast constant speed, then a decreasing speed, and then a slow constant speed. Remember, for a displacement time graph, a constant speed has a constant gradient, and an increasing or decreasing speed will have changing gradients. Is that what you thought? If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Subscribe to our channel to check out more of Century's content. And visit our website to find out about our learning platform.